Okay, good morning. We continue in the Share Tshuva. We're on page 34 and 35. Sif Chothe. We're discussing the seventh principle of Hachno, of humility. We've given a number of reasons, according to Rabbi Yonah, why humility is critical. And the last one was a person shouldn't take credit for what he's done, because if he does, then he may stop doing it because he's feeling he's already going beyond the call of duty. So now in Chavhei, Rabbein Yonah is going to give us textual proofs to what he is saying, that humility is such an important thing. And in coming to discuss this principle of humility in regards to tshuva, this is explained with the words of the Navi of blessed memory, with the prophet Micha. And over there, the Jewish people are asking questions of Hashem through the words of the prophet. They're asking two questions through the words of the prophet. Here's the questions. Bamo akadem Hashem ikaf leloke moro. So, Bamo Akadem Hashem, with what can I approach Hashem and thereby thank Hashem for everything that He's done for me in my life? And the next line is, Ikaf Leloke Marom, how can I show my humility? These are two questions that the Jewish people through the Navi are asking Hashem. Perish. So Rabbi Yon is going to explain what this means. Bamo Akadem Hashem. With what can I approach Hashem? What's that referencing? Al Rov Chasadov. For all His abundant kindnesses that He has done for me. Now, how do we know that's what it's talking about? Ki Hisker Lamalava Parasha Mechasei Hashem Isbrach. Because earlier in that chapter, it discusses the kindnesses of Hashem that He has done for the Jewish people. So that's what the first question is asking. With what can I approach Hashem to show my thanks to Him for everything He has done for me? The second question is, And in what way can I humble myself before uh, the, the lofty God? It's referring to for the abundance of sins I have done. And when mentioning Hashem's name, it says, Eloikei Marom, the God, the, the high and mighty God. Lahoros to teach us, Ulodian to inform us. Kamaroi asher yikaf v'yikona mishihim marom. How worthy it is for a person to humble himself before one who has rebelled against the God who is so high. In other words, to bring across the idea that I should feel humble by the greatness of Hashem in comparison to what I have done to let him down as to what he expected from me. And that's the question. Okay. The economy Shehimra Ram is going to the next page. Alako. Who's the highest of everything. So how do I deal with that? So now... The Navi goes on. This is, all, this is all just teaching us some sukkum already. That's why this page went a little quickly here. So now the Navi goes on. Okay, so what do I do? What do I do to thank for everything he's done? How do I show my humility for the various I've done? You already see right away. That's the proof that he's bringing. He's bringing the proof. How do we know that humility is a critical aspect of tshuva? So that's already the proof. But it goes on and gives you the whole, the whole thing. Shall I come before Hashem with 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 uh, with a korban uh, ola, with a burnt offering, with calves that are a year old? Should I bring them korbanos? Hashem Will Hashem be happy with if I bring thousands of rams for korbanos? And I'm going to bring 10,000 rivers of oil 
as libations to go with the korbanos. And everyone says, Hashem, I'm going to have with a lot of korbanos. I'm going to give him lots of korbanos. Is that how I'm going to thank for all that he's done for me? That's, in other words, the Jews are thinking, maybe that's what I have to do. And then, the second clause, the second aspect, what do I do to humble myself? Haitain b'chori pishi. Should I bring the firstborn for my offense that I've done? I should be willing to kill my eldest child. While Indian Masha Omar Ikap Lilokemarom. That's going on the second question of how can I humble myself before the Almighty God? And therefore he says, for Omar he says, Ha attain bechori pishi. Should I give my firstborn son for my uh, willful transgressions? So what is that showing? Laharos kniosi ukfi fosi alrochatoi to show my humility and my subjugation to the abundance of sins that I have done. Meaning to say, Because I recognize the depth of my willful sin because it's worthy to really give my firstborn as an offering instead in, to replace, to atone for the sin that I did because it's great and awesome considering who you are and what I should have been doing. That's what the Jews will think they should be doing in which they recognize how terrible their Avera is. That's what he's saying. pre chatas nafshi the fruit of my, and it goes on with the Pasuk, the fruit of my womb for the sin of my soul. So saying, he's, there's two clauses on this. He's here a lot, Pesha Bechori, on the Pesha aspect, which is a stronger expression of sin, firstborn, Val Chatas, and for the sin, which is usually a shogeg, an unintentional, Previtni, the fruit of my, of my stomach, he had Pesha who are married because Pesha is a rebellion. As our rabbis explained, Pesha is a stronger expression of sin. It's more than sin. So that's what the Jews will thought they had to do. So now we get the Navi's answer. And this is the answer of the Navi. On behalf of Hashem, he gid So you know, at this point, the Jew is is probably really willing to give up. You know, this, is, this, this Judaism is asking too much of me, and that's what many about Shuva thinks. Doing Jew, before they become about Jew, is what is this going to require me to be a good Jew? Oh, I, I know what it is. I'm going to give away all my money, and give away my family and everything. I'm giving away my whole life. Right thousands of carbonos to show thanks Hashem to, to atone for my sins I have to kill my children right okay the pagans believed in that as well that's what they did they threw their kids into volcanoes or whatever but so that's what it thinks so tshuva is extremely painful process way beyond what I can do it's too hard to be an orthodox Jew that's what the people are saying to which the response is and, and this, you know, you're asking me to do things that are above, beyond my human capabilities. So the answer to that is, Higid l'cho Adam. So now, it has been told to you, Adam, man. In other words, we're talking to a human being here. We're not asking for things that are beyond the human being's capability. Matov, uma Hashem doresh mimcha. What is good and what does Hashem seek from you? All he asks for is Kimasos Mishpot Vaahavas Chesed. Hashem wants you to do justice, to be a just, proper person, Vaahavas Chesed, and love doing kindness. He said, Nivchor Mina Olos Vaminochos Lakadi Boas Hashem Al Chasadov. That's the best way, it's much better than giving animal offerings and, 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 and meal offerings and libations. That's the best way to present yourself to Hashem for His kindnesses that He's done. That's all Hashem wants. You want to thank Hashem for what He's done for you? Be a mensch. Do chesed. That's all. And now that's, that clause is going on the first question. And that now here's for Ben Yonah's Chiddush. 
and walk humbly with your God. Do things quietly and privately. And that's what Ben Yonah said yesterday. You should do your mitzvahs clandestinely so you don't show off. So walk humbly with Hashem. What's that going on? Say, Iker Kniyoscha Ukfifoscha Lavodas Hashem Batsnealachas. That is the primary way to show your humility and your subjugation is by serving Hashem with Hatsnealachas, with discretion, hidden. That's what it means, really, hidden. Kizayora al Kniyoscha Shalosach Mod Kovar al Masech Anichbarim Af al Amailas Ashaloyach and Semayet Sesitzurah. This will show your humility that you should not be, uh, be, be, be lusting and yearning for honor over the activities, although the activities you've done are, are very nice, right? But, and that's especially what Hashem doesn't want people to do. You shouldn't glorify yourself with what you've done. Just like, in the same way, He doesn't want you to glorify yourself over mundane virtues, like wealth, strength, and wisdom. Right? He doesn't want so he doesn't want you to uh, to be arrogant over the fact that you're doing mitzvahs. Except so the only thing you take pride in is if you really know Hakadosh Baruch and you're really using your mind to get close to Hashem. That's something that takes a lot of effort. Moshe Nemers it says Al Yishal al Chacham b'Chacham So a wise person should not glorify himself with the wisdom that he has. So there you have the the pasuk, the, the whole proof that he brings clearly to show you where the Jews will realize that they've done things that are wrong, and they think they should mamish rip out their kishkes and give their children as an atonement to show their, the humility before Hashem. Hashem says, "You want to show your humility before me? Do mitzvahs without showing off." finished do mitzvahs without taking credit for what you're doing and, that, and that's, that's the best way to show your humility before me. okay and really what, what that really is showing is when you do it that way as we've explained before that that's, that's the main thing that Hashem wants us to do the main thing is remember as, as we learned from Rav Miller that's his first shmuz uh, in, in this form on Rav Miller's works in Hebrew it says as snail leches what's the critical point Im Hashem Aleichecha. Walk discreetly with Hashem. With Hashem. That's the main thing. Walk with me. Be with me. As we talked about in Yom Kippur, between Musaf and Mincha. The goal is to be with me. Not to do the mitzvahs discreetly, but to be with Hashem. To walk with me. Be with me. That's, that's, that's the thing that nobody really needs to know about. You do that privately and discreetly, and that's that's how you show your humility. You don't show off to people. So that's the proof from the puzzle. Yes. What is this notion of um, the sacrifices and giving up your firstborn? Because that's what he's comparing what uh, the Jews think they should do, and actually what we should do is just walk. Right. Humble. Right. Well, what does the notion come from in the first place? Why it was it was the notion of the pagan rituals that went on. Yeah, but why why did we? Uh, get this involved with this sort of thing why are they doing it because it, it's something that would be a logical thing to do how is it logical well listen uh, this is a concept of a mysterious nevish of giving up self-sacrificing so you'd figure the ultimate self-sacrifice made to give away one of my children uh, okay I understand that but what, you want to show how much did Hashem ever ask for that sort no. of thing no listen the, the, the goyim don't need an excuse to adulterate uh, the will of God <laughs> It's not the first time that non-Jews have taken Jewish concepts and adulterating them. Well, so this is not a Jewish concept at all. It's not. No, uh, although we mentioned from Rav Dessler that, as he explains that Kedus Yitzchak, right. he explained, I don't want to go through the whole thing right now, but he, he explains that in theory, what Hashem would have wanted at that Kedus Yitzchak is that Yitzchak should have been sacrificed and then immediately afterwards would have been the Tchiyas HaMesim and would have been the Tikkun Olam. So, you know, there is a svara to say that it could have been on a one-time deal only that had Avram been able to slaughter Yitzchak and had the generation been worthy of it, then immediately the Tikkun Olam would have come and Yitzchak would have been resurrected and the whole thing would have been wonderful. And that 
but but he explains Rav Dess explains how you could see why human beings why it would logically make sense in terms of subjugating oneself before Kodesh Baruch Hu, that one should be willing to to kill his children but the reason we don't do that the reason we don't do that is because then there'd be no religion and we don't be the serve Hashem so you can't do that but you could but you could hear the logic you know, you have to self-sacrifice in so many other ways. You have to be willing to give away all your money in the world, not to transgress one law. Or if the not, not, law to is going to happen. not to transgress one negative precept. You have to become a pauper. Okay, a person says, eat trafe or give me all your money. So you have to give away all your money. That's it. But to live as a pauper the rest of your life, to one time that eat trafe, that's what Torah requires. So I do that already. Many people value their money more than their children, without question. So okay, I'd rather give you one of my kids. So you can understand how a person would think that. It's not, it's not so crazy. You know, serving Hashem requires a lot of self-sacrifice. It's not, right? We know that. So and what if Hashem would say, give up one of your kids? Okay, that's what you say. That's what Avram Vino did. But he, it did never happen. That's the I, whole but, point. But, but, but Avram didn't know that. Yes, he did. He I. didn't know that Hashem would say not to sacrifice his son. When Hashem told him to take his son, he thought he had to kill him. He thought he had to kill him. Right? On the last second, Hashem says, what's Hashem showing? See, maybe by right and by logic and everything else, maybe you should go. Okay, but at the end of the day, I don't want that. So you can understand how Goyim could want that. It's, it's not so unusual. Goyim, Goyim could want that. So, so that's what they're thinking. So they're saying, no, you... It's, but, but, but what the Navi is really trying to bring across, is what I said before, is to have, to have a second... No, we're making the follow-up calls now. For a secular Jew to do something religious, they'd rather die. They'd rather die. They'd rather die than go to your house for Shabbos. They'd rather die. For sure, they'd rather die than give tzedakah. They'd rather die than, than put on film. They'd rather die than, than, than come to shul on shop. They'd rather die. So, they, what, what do you mean? It, it's, like, it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's as crazy as killing my kid. It's as crazy as ripping out my kishkas. You know, and, and, and therefore I'd rather not listen to that So he says, That's not, it's not so crazy. All you got to do is walk humbly with me. Just live with me. That's all I want. So that's that's showing you the di divergence of what people think how terrible <laughs> is is avodas Hashem, and to which it's it's very reasonable thing. All Hashem wants is be a mensch, love to do kindness, and do it humbly. Finished. It's all it's all about. And people, and, and that's one of the last words the Navi ever tells Klai. So it's all Hashem wants you to do. So it show, that, that's, that's the biggest lesson, but he's using it in terms of to show that humility is part of the tshuva process. Okay, let's go on. Chafav. So we did a whole page already. See, yesterday we, didn't, we did two lines. Right? Chafav. Still on humility. He's going to be on humility for a while. And there's another reason why the tshuva should be humble. Because he's obliged to remove from his soul, his soul, the characteristics that will cause him to sin, and will bring about activities that will cause uh, uh, a purposeful uh, sins on purpose. In other words, an arrogant person will do more of theirs. Remember, the Baal Tshuva has to stop doing all of Averis from now on. A person who's not humble is more likely to do Averis. Okay, and now he's going to explain further on that. Zion. Hagaiva misabeves kam Averis umagberes yetzer leva odomolov. Arrogance uh, brings about many types of sins and strengthens the yetzer hora of the heart of a person. Shinemaras has many, many psuk and proof. One of them is Varam Lavavcha, your heart will become lifted, meaning you'll be arrogant. And you will forget Hakodish Baruch. Venemar, another Pasik in Proverbs says, Rum Einaim Urachav Lev, near Rishoyim Chatos. 
Rum enai, a person who walks with his high eyes lifted up. Right? His nose is up in the air. Urachav lev, and he has as as a as a as a, bro, a, uh, a broad heart, meaning lots of lust. This arrogant guy. Near rishayim chatos, it's a near. It is a a plowed field for the wicked to do averus. Meaning to say, how do you how do you plant a field that produces a lot of fruit? What's the first thing you gotta do? You wanna have a field to produce a lot of fruit. The first thing is you gotta plow it. By plowing it, you make the earth fertile enough to take in the seeds and to grow them. So the Danavi is saying, so what is the field in which the activities of the wicked will grow? How do you make sure that we can plant wicked activities and produce wicked fruits? Right? So you plow it with arrogance. It's making yourself very fertile to do terrible averus. And what's that? That's arrogance. Because the arrogant person has nothing to hold them back from doing an avera. Perish. Now he explains what we just said. Hagaiva near Harishraim. Arrogance is the plowing of the wicked. Kimimeno yifru hachatoim. Because from that will come out a grow an abundance of sins. Kashenemar, as the Pasik says, Vrom Levovecha Vishakto. Your heart will be lofty, you're going to be arrogant. Vishakhat, and forget Hashem. And he gives many more psukim to prove this. The Namar it says, Begavas Rosha Yidlak Oni. With the arrogant of the, the wicked, they will hotly pursue the, the poor. In other words, they, they won't be embarrassed, they won't be ashamed to, to, to cause the poor to suffer. The Nemar Hadovras al Tzadik, and they, they speak uh, arrogantly against the Tzadik, Osog, the Gaiva, with all kinds of arrogance and, 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 and falsehood and things like that. The Nemar, another Pasuk, Kinosnu Chiti Som Be'eretz Chaim, they put, they strike their fear into the land of the living. And now he explains. Just like people, if they want to plow a field, could they leave for a zero of less of us in order to to plant a lot of seeds and to gather a lot of grain? So similarly, similarly, the wicked, in terms of the arrogance, the arrogance it plows in their hearts, in order to seed in it evil thoughts and then to bring forth and to grow Averis which are the fruits of your thinking okay so in other words he's saying is that the gaiva the arrogance that is within a person gets the person thinking all kinds of schemes all kinds of plots that are in tune with, a, with what he thinks of uh, himself as a person and then that eventually leads the person to hurting other people taking advantage of other people and thinking badly of other people okay so now all terrible activities so where does it all start from from the person's impression of who he is the impression of himself uh, gets him thinking along a certain line about himself and about others and that's what produces all the negative activity and that that's the source of all the problems okay continuing Valdera Hamashal and uh, for example Shomer HaNovi the Novi says in the prophet Hosea Uporach Karosh Mishpat and, and it sprouts forth like a, a poisonous plant alright his judgment as his judgment you know sprouts forth in a very negative way Umash Omer Chatos why say the word Chatos what's the idea of Chatos over here Perish in other words, it's getting very technical. See, it's very interesting. Rabbi Yonah sometimes will just go say very deep ideas. Then he's going to spend all, all the time just tr- telling you how to say precise translation of the Pesukim. So he's worried about the words don't fit in 100% when he says that, uh, 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 what does he say? Near Rishoyim Chatos, so the grammar isn't 100% correct. So he's working on the grammar now. So we'll bear with us for a moment. That which is Chatos, Perish, Near Rishoyim, near Chatos. The plowing of the wicked is a plowing for sin. The Kolal Chatoim Rabbi. It includes many, many sins. Kemo Chatas Yehuda, like the expression of Chatas Yehuda. 
So it means to say the plowing of the wicked produces many sins. Oh, year perush, or we can explain a little differently by adding a vav in front of the word chatos. Near rishayim vichatos. In other words, the pasuk is bechasar and vav, missing a vav, but you read it as if there is a vav. The plowing of the wicked and it produces sin. Kamo, like you find by the word shemesh yareach, sun, moon. You have to put a vav in to make it make sense, sun and the moon. Okay. And the reason for all this is what he means to say is like this beyond the fact that arrogance causes sin here's the point he's making the attribute itself is a sin so that's what he's saying near Rishayim Chatos a person who's arrogant is, is near Rishayim is the planting of the wicked Chatos so either it'll mean it'll bring you to sin or that itself is a chait. Being arrogant alone is a chait. Not only the fact it will cause you to do sins. If a person's arrogant, there's no question he will eventually do avers. There's no question that he, he has to do avers. He thinks he's so great. He understands more than Hashem. He understands more than other people. He deserves honor. Of course he's going to do avers. That's not the question. We don't have to wait for him to do the avers. The arrogant person itself is in a sinful state. And that's what the Pasuk is saying. Kamosha Nemar, as it says in Mishle, to avas Hashem kol gva lev. What is an abomination to Hashem? And we know that Hashem reserves that word, an abomination, to refer to a person under the most extreme of eros, such as homosexuality or things like that. Hashem reserves it for, for the worst type of activities it's like an activity that um, strips away your humanity that's what an abomination is it's not, it's not just stam you do avers you can do a lot of avers and you're still a human being you're still a human being okay it's not good and it's terrible and this and that but you're still you're a human being who sins an abomination is uh, you, you, you've dehumanized yourself you're not, you're not even in the ballpark of being a human being now. You know, you go to a cow, logically explain to a cow he shouldn't be eating uh, in another person's field. You don't. You muzzle the cow and that's the end of the discussion. The cow is not one to be reasoned with. So a person who is doing actions that are toeva, it's a person that, that is so disgusting. In other words, he's taken his humanity and stripped his humanity away. And that, 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 yeah, there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to talk about. So that, that's, that's regarding uh, homosexuals. That, that's clearly because the person now has lost. We're not going to go into that whole Indian now. But the whole idea of being human means that Selim Elohim is man and woman. Selim Elohim is man and woman finished the Torah says it if you want to be a human being you have to be married finished at least you want to be married trying to get married you realize you have to get married but if, but if you peshita hold you don't have to get married a man to a woman right that means you've dehumanized yourself you will never have the cell of the finished so no, we have nobody to talk to nobody to talk to you're not a human being so, so that in that same category is the arrogant person Tovas Hashem kol gvalev. A person who's arrogant has taken away his humanity. Right? For, for many reasons. Uh, Ramban, Ramban on the Pasuk, um, he talks about it, he um, talks about the Chumash, but when referencing this Pasuk, who, who has the right to be arrogant? Only one being has the right to be arrogant. Hashem. Hashem. Hashem could be arrogant. And I was, what do you mean arrogant? To take credit. He, he, God is God's gift to the world. <laughs> and you may say, oh, this guy thinks he's God's gift to the world. Uh, uh, but God is God's gift to the world. He's entitled to think that way. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that, that's a that whole expression. When, when is, that's always used. Hey, he thinks he's God's gift to the world. Everybody's got to do for him and this and that. That's the area. He thinks he's great. Okay, now, who is entitled to think he's great? Hashem. Because he is great. When Hashem thinks he's great, he's not arrogant, you see. That's not arrogant, but it's the, 
listen, Hashem doesn't need to be persuaded. He is the greatest. He knows it and, and he acts accordingly. So how is it when a human being thinks he's great? So the Ramban says it's like you're taking the raiment of the king and wearing it. The only being who can wear this feeling of greatness, gvalev, gvalev, a lofty heart. A lofty heart means I'm, I am incredible. Right? It's only Hashem. That's Hashem's garment. So now if you act that way, it's like you're wearing the king's garments, which is the biggest chutzpah the world. Because what you're really saying is, is that you're God. That's what the arrogant person really thinks he is. He thinks he's God. I'm so great. Everybody has to listen to me. I can't do anything wrong. I mean, one of the concepts of God is God never makes a mistake. Right? God knows everything. He understands everything. No one can argue with Hashem. Right? Those are some of the attributes that... I mean, that's reasonable because He does know everything. And He is all-powerful. And everything has to be the way he wants it because he has a plan for the world in godly understanding that has to be. So what what's the arrogant th person think? He, he knows everything. He's more clever than anyone else. Everyone has to submit themselves before him. So he thinks he's God. So there's many ways to destroy your humanness. You can destroy your humanness by taking half of your mitos and, and not trying to improve on them. You can, you can lose your humanness by, by, by being half a person. You can lose your humanness by thinking you're God. Once you think you're God, we're in big trouble. There's no way, there's no way we can get you on the right track. It's just not possible. What are you going to accept the tochacha? You're going to try to improve. What does that have to improve on? He's already God's gift to the world. So that's the most disgusting thing that Hashem looks at. You think you're the king? You think you're the king. So there's nothing, there's nothing, they can't talk to such a guy. Arrogant people, there's no, nobody to talk to. So that, that's how this, so that itself is a sinful state. Well, what did I do? What did you do? You rebelled against the king. You're putting on the king's clothes. That's the worst thing you do. You think you're the king. You have to wait for him to do something. That itself is the biggest chutzpah around. Walking around, and, he, he's the king. How, how do you feel? You know, when you're in the house and all the kids in your house are deciding how the house should be managed. You know, you have times where this, especially when you have older children. And especially, you know, when they're married already. Because then they're extremely clever. You know, and you have all these discussions that are going on. Well, you know, um, I think you shouldn't be in this room because I'm entitled to this room. Uh, I think that uh, uh, you, you're not entitled to take the car. So I say, you know, I just want to inform, and there's a whole discussion going on, and I just say, I just want to inform you something, that I still own this house. <laughs> I still pay for these cars. And as soon as any of you want to start doing that, then you can have a voice of what to say. Until then, I will decide everything. They kind, of, they kind of forget it for a minute, you know, because they're so accustomed to uh, having their room. I, mean, I said, what well, if I've had my room last week? I said, you've had the room because I've let you have it. Remember that? I could, I could throw you out today. It's my, I could charge you rent. And you're telling me, you're, you're telling a sibling, you know, what, what should be going on? I think we should, what do you mean? You, you have nothing to say. Nothing to say. No, no, of course, you know they don't mean that. Chas for Shalom. They get just so they get just so used to it. They get so involved, and, and as soon as they hear that, then they they recognize what the problem is, you know. But the arrogant person doesn't have a parent to tell them that they're being arrogant. No, nobody can tell him that he's arrogant. He is, and there's just nothing to talk about. And if you go and tell him he's arrogant, he'll, he'll punch you out. And that's all. And he'll say, well, he's crazy. But, uh, but, but that, that's why that itself is in Aver. Do you understand? It could be no worse Aver. You know, what, what's worse? Your kid, let's say, steals $100 from you. What, what would you feel worse at? Your kid lifted $100 out of your wallet? Or your kid has start giving orders as to how the house should be run? 
I mean, two hundred dollars ain't great either. I'm not saying that's a good thing. But if they're like they're they're like and they and they just they're just running the house. They, they think they own the house. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars. Okay, they had a yates of heart. They had a yates of heart still. You know, they needed a hundred dollars. They were embarrassed. They were ashamed and this and that. Okay, it's violating your fine. But they they didn't realize that they're running the house. But if they start, if they think they're running the house, you know, and then they and they and they talk with a certain attitude, you know, you you, you know, you can't. That's much more difficult to live with than okay, they listed a hundred dollars. It's cause one is it's it's a chasar, it's a chasar in one part. It's okay, the person had a taiva. Okay, had a taiva. He couldn't control the taiva. He needed a hundred dollars. Was too embarrassed to ask for you. Okay, it's a chutz. It's everything, but. I don't think they really think that they are are you, but when they do things that displace you, that the things that are really the covet that you should have, and you're not giving you that covet, that's much worse. And that that itself is simply it. So that was first, and then. So we always say that we're born with certain mitos. I'm sorry. We we're we always learn that we're born with certain mitos, with more of one and more of another. And yeah. That, and our chicken is to try to, you know, balance everything. Yes. Is arrogance something that somebody is born with? It doesn't sound like from this character. That no, arrogance, arrogance is the fine line between good self-esteem, which you should have, have the az kinamer, you should be as bold as the leopard. Now, you know, you, if, if for you to put out fill in an airport in Texas, well, it's easier in Texas, right? <laughs> You have to play a place that's more uh, eight years. in Toronto. In Toronto, probably oh, it, 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 it take, takes a certain boldness. You have to be bold to do that, right? You have to really say, "I have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm doing something great," which which is good. But 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 the other just cross over the line, and you think you're great, right? That's already gone over the line too much. So so it it comes from a good aspect. Comes from a good aspect, so it, it it comes from a holy characteristic. You have you have to have boldness. That's a very Nobody important. Somebody can be born with arrogance, like you're born with an angry disposition. We've always said some people are born with an angry disposition. That's I don't know. I don't know why, why can't a guy be born with arrogance? Why not? You have to remember, arrogant anger. Anger, the Rambam says, is the other side of the coin of an arrogant person. So if they're born with air, anger, that means they they have arrogance. They have, they have within themselves uh, a feeling of of good self beyond, right? So there's no reason why they can't be born with that. No reason they can't be born with that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting. It's such a fine line. First of all, the concepts. You know, tell us you some of the image of God. So God God has the right to be arrogant. Because but it's not, but, yeah, but it's not arrogant. But it, okay. it, it, it's not arrogant, though. It, I understand. So God, God can feel He's great. Right. He has a right to. Then we have the concept of monarchies, right, of kingship, where we yes. where we go through these these combinations of uh, you know of of um, and things like that that we're that we're looking at even you know the forty nine levels and how we're improving it. Yes. Yes. And, and we talk about our purpose. In life is to emulate become, God. Emulate God, become as close as God, as close to God as possible. So there's a, it's very murky in terms of where the line is, um, of displaying certain characteristics that might either be perceived to be arrogance or might cause you to move more towards arrogance than you should. Right. No, I understand your question. If you're supposed to emulate God, so you're emulating His His arrogance. You know, try to emulate perfection. Well, there's a right. So okay. So but obviously, as you do it as a person, it, it has to come out a little different than as a sham. Just like in all the mitos, your chesed, no matter how much chesed you do, will never be as much as a sham can do. In other words, the the idea is the image of God means you're a miniature model of a sham. So to the degree that you can do chesed, that's what Hashem asks from you. You you can't. You, you can do chesed in a way that Hashem does chesed, but you can't do the volume of chesed. You can't, you're not in his league of chesed. In any of the media, you can't do it at, on that um, level the way Hashem can do it. You could do it in that style, you understand, but not that level. You just can't do chesed the way Hashem can do chesed. And don't ever think you can. 
but you can mini model it you can mini model it that you know just like Hashem does chesed and doesn't let people know he's doing the chesed so you can do chesed not letting them do the chesed but for you to go feed the whole world you're never going to be able to do that you can, so you've got to get over that you'll never be able to do chesed that way so in every midah as much as you're trying to approach it there's going to be a place where there's going to be that's as far as you can go in the midah and you can't go any farther in the midah Hashem's not arrogant I know he's not he's not arrogant because it's not po it's not po it's not possible. But if, if we would display the same feelings as Hashem would in that area, for us it would be arrogance because on the other hand we're his servants. He's the opposite of arrogance. We're servants. So we re re reflect it. We reflect it in boldness. No, but there's times where it's it's Hashem owes. You know, he comes with his power and his might and his boldness. And, and he knows that he is God's gift to the world. So, but you, if you would say the same thing, you, but you are. So, so how do you measure that? You are, you are God's gift to the world in terms of being his ambassador to the world. That's where you're God's gift to the world, not because you're smart. See, so that's where you have to know where to take the meter and where you know you can't go beyond that. Yeah, you are God's gift to the world. For what? to make the world better. That, and that's the only reason God is God's gift to the world. To make the world better. And then you have to realize that what he gave you, or if you think you have, is from him. So there's nothing to be uh, bold about. And uh, on the other hand, there's humility, which God also has humility. And that's where they balance. It's the Midos always balance. There's always Chesed and Gvura balance each other off to have, uh, to have uh, Tiferes. Netzach and Hod get balanced with Yisod. Netzach is eternity. Netzach is victory. Netzach means I could do anything. Now that could really get you to be a Balgaiva. That's what Netzach does. So that right next to that is hold, which is humility. So on the one end you have to say, I could do anything within reason. There's nothing to say, so I can win all the time. I can win by doing mitzvahs. I can win by going against the non-Jews who hate the world. I can win. And that means I've got a lot in me to be able to win. That's what Netzach says. And that's what it says. It's not, not what it says. I can't do this. I'm great. You are. You are in the sound of looking. You're great in terms of potentials and power and things like that. What do you mean to say you can't get up in the morning at, at 6 o'clock? You're great. You can do that. What do you mean to say that you can't hold back an insult when somebody says, so you're great? So then you might think you're really great. So then you have hold, which is humility that balances it. And then you have the healthy balance. The arrogant person is going way over in the Netzach zone and isn't balancing it with the hold. Right? And that, so that's Hashem, as great as he is, he still acts with humility. That, that's how you have to, that's why the, the meters have to balance themselves. So if you don't balance it, then you're out of whack. All right. So let's just do one, one more line. Kemoshe Nemar, as it says, Ubal uh, Hagaiva Nimsar Beyad Yitzra. And the Balgaiva is given over to his Yitzra, to his inclination. Because if, if a person thinks of himself in an arrogant way, then there's nothing he doesn't deserve. Nothing he can't do. Nothing that he can't have. Because of the way he thinks about himself. So there's no limit to where he'll go. Everything he desires, everything he wants belongs to me. I should have it. Everything negative that happens to me should not have happened. And, and he's totally given over to his inclinations. And, and if I want something, I'm an arrogant person. The arrogance says that I must have it. It's only right I should have it and I should have it. That's why he's given over to his Yetzirah. Okay, and the last point he says is, Ki ein ezer Hashem imo. Hashem. Once he's abominab abominable before Hashem, then Hashem doesn't help him anymore. Hashem doesn't want nothing to do with the guy anymore. Right? So, because it says, you think you're, you're God? So go ahead. Go do it on your own. See what you can do. And, and what happens is you can't do anything. So that's worse. Hashem will never help such a person until he changes. Okay. We'll continue tomorrow morning. Give me a